What is up everyone, we've been back again with another Blu-ray and 4K update. This is just me talking about all the movies and in this case a TV show that I've picked up over the past few weeks. I've got a few 4Ks in here, a couple of arrows and a TV box set and a few Blu-rays. You get the gist. Does what it says on the tin really. So I'll just start with the TV box set I picked up because some of you may have seen this. I done my first ever live stream on the channel and the postman decided to knock with this as I was live streaming. <laughs> That is the Twin Peaks, the television collection. Um, I was going to pick up the Z2A box set with Fire Walk with me in there, but it's just shot up massively in price. So I just went with this and I thought I'll just get the criterion of the Fire Walk with me movie. I only got into Dave Lynch a couple of years ago and I know I'm kind of late to the party, but I've just loved everything I've seen from him. Apart from maybe a raise ahead, which I do feel might change on rewatch, because there was something about that film, but I've heard this is the best thing he's done. So I just feel like I have to watch it. It's been on my list for a very long time. And I grabbed it. I just grabbed it. So here we go, Twin Peaks. Hopefully I'll be watching that pretty soon. Really looking forward to it. I've heard there's a few unanswered questions in there. I don't know if the third series answers them, but that's just David Lynch all over, isn't it? <laughs> Let's get to the 4Ks now. So this is Bong Joon-ho's masterpiece, according to some people. I'm not sure I know. I think it's a masterpiece, but it's half genius. I really enjoyed the film. Winner of Best Picture, of course. This is a movie you're best going into blind, like I did, because it's got everything in there, really. Um, it's a really good concept. I just don't want to give away too much. If you have seen it, you'll know why. Um, it's not unlike you've seen before, I'll put it that way. Um, but I highly recommend this film. I wanted it in the collection for sure. It's just one of them. I feel like I should own. There's a black and white version here as well, which might be interesting to watch. Maybe that'll uh, give me a different view on the film or whatever. But I thought this was a great movie and I had to have it. So, yeah. Foreign movies always do something a little bit different, don't they? Next up is Christopher Nolan's Interstellar. Now, i got to admit, I did not love this film when I seen it at the cinema. It's the only time I've watched it. But how can so many people be wrong about this? I mean, I want to like it. I do want to like it. I just found it a bit of a struggle when I watched it. However, now I'm reviewing films and stuff and getting into as much as I can to know about films, I feel like I've got to give this another go. I've got to. I mean, if I don't like it second time round, fair enough. But I know Christopher Nolan's movies are meant to look great on 4K, so that makes me want to watch it even more. So I'm looking forward to a second watch. I just didn't, really didn't like the ending. I'm not going to say what it is, but some of you may know what I mean. I was just like, what's going on here? <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to giving it another go, for sure. Especially on 4K. Next up is a movie, <laughs> again, that I didn't love the first time round, but I want to give it another go. And some of you might think I'm being grim here and a bit of a negative person, but I'm not like that at all. I'm not. I just... I thought this film was good. I just didn't see the big hype about it. But that is They Live. John Carpenter's uh, they Live, and this stars that guy off um, Hell Comes to Frogtown, who recently died, Roddy Piper, um, sadly. Um, this is basically him going around with some sunglasses on, and he can see he was an alien or not, which I think is a good, it's a good concept. I just think it could have been executed a little bit better there. But there's some fun moments in this. You all know that quote, I've come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. I did like that. That was great. But I'm looking forward to giving this another go. I am. I, I do love fun 80s cheese, you know. So, next up is A Star Is Born. Now, I done a, I done a collaboration with my friend John Perry from Mondo Chelovit Movies. And we both picked five great performances. And he picked Lady Gaga in A Star Is Born as one of them. And when we were talking about it, it just made me want to watch this film again. So I picked it up on 4K. I think it's a great movie. You know, romance and stuff isn't really my 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 favourite genre or anything, but this has got a bit of drama and stuff in there as well. Bradley Cooper's brilliant in this alongside Lady Gaga. The both of them just work so well together on screen. And the fact that this was like her 
their acting debut. I know she'd done some extras here and there, but she was amazing in this movie. She really was. Such an emotional film. And I think this has been done a few times, but this is the only version I've seen. I really enjoyed it. Had to have it in the collection. Next up is Pet Cemetery. I own the original. I prefer the original, but I didn't think this was a bad film or anything. Uh, it's, it's 7 out of 10 movie. I did like the little twist in the middle there, which I won't say, but decent enough horror film. I'm a horror hound, so I just wanted to own it. Like I said, it's not as good as the original, but it's an okay, it's an okay remake. Glad to own it. Next up is the third in M. Night Shyamalan's sort of dark superhero trilogy there, and that is Glass. I want to give this another go. I didn't mind it, but I thought it was the weakest out of three, and it went in directions that I didn't expect, but that's M. Night Shyamalan, isn't it? I actually prefer Unbreakable the most. I think that's a solid film. But one day I'm going to sit back and watch all three of these again, but it's not it's not bad. Samuel L. Jackson, Bruce Willis, and James McAvoy in one movie. Can't, can't knock that too much, can you? But it's definitely the weakest out of three. Maybe that'll change on rewatch. Next up is The Shape of Water, and I really did like this film. The cinematography was great. Uh, Guillermo del Toro, I believe. Yes. Um, I think this, yeah, best picture there, yeah. So I, I do think it's a good film. It's weird, <laughs> but that's good, isn't it? Because if all movies were the same, we'd be pretty boring. I like finding new things and stuff, but the look of this film is brilliant. And it's a heartfelt story. I really enjoyed it. The theme of water is all over the place here. And it just worked. It really did. I'm looking forward to watching this again. My friend Rio, or Reese from Rio's Positive POV, has been banging on about this film this month because he just loves it that much. And that did push me towards getting it for the collection. So that is The Shape of Water. Decent little movie to have in the collection there. Next up, we've got some arrows. And this is... A bit like Parasite, where I'm not going to explain it too much. You need to go in blind, and that is I See You. I watched this on Netflix, and I liked it that much. I picked it up. Um, basically, a lot of weird things are happening in this house with this family, and you don't know how it's happening. But as the movie goes on, it all starts to come together. And that's all I'll say. <laughs> you know, it, It's worth just going in blind. It really is. But it's a really clever film, very well put together. Really great screenplay and stuff. I, I I highly recommend this film. Helen Hunt is in this. Uh, she's a, she's okay in the film. She's it's a bit of a weird performance actually. I feel but Judah Lewis who was in Summer of eighty four and is it strange I can't, oh the babysitter and stuff. I think he's a good little actor in but I I, I highly recommend this. It's a decent movie. It really is. Next up is one I watched on Shudder last week, and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to grab that on Blu-ray. <laughs> and that is Edge of the Axe, a film I've wanted to see for quite a while now. I just needed a cheesy horror fix, horror slasher fix. I just needed it. I hadn't watched one for a while, and I went with this because a lot of people rave about it, and it was good. I enjoyed it. It's nothing special. Some of the kills look a bit dodgy and stuff, but I had quite a bit of fun with this. I think I give it like 3 out of 5 on Letterboxd. So I grabbed it on Blu-ray. I've wanted to own this one for a while now, so happy to have it. Some funny moments there involving like an email. <laughs> you, they're blown away by how email works in that film, and now it's just a click of a button, isn't it? <laughs> Next up is Fright Night. Now, from a Eureka, I picked this up because I've done a horror collaboration with my friend Bryn from Horror Hands. And we've done our top five horror films of all time, and he picked Fright Night as one of his, so I watched it. I think it was on Prime, was it? I can't quite remember now. And it just instantly picked the Blu-ray off because I thought, I need to own that. It's one of the best vampire films I've seen. It's like a horror comedy. There's some funny moments in the first 30 minutes, but then it definitely leans towards horror. Chris Sarandon is a great vampire in this. And there's a young kid called Evil <laughs> who had the potential to be the most annoying character I've ever seen, but he wasn't. He was the star of the show. It's, it kind of reminds me of a film you could watch around Halloween. It's just got that... 80s horror feel to it. I recommend it, especially if you want to, if you like vampire films, it's decent enough. Glad to own that one. 
Next up is The Conjuring 2. I already own the first one, but I actually prefer this. The first one is definitely more jumpier and scarier, and I like the first one, I really do, but as a story, I just like this Enfield setting a little bit more. Better Farminger, obviously, is just great. I love her as an actress. She's brilliant, and she's no exception for her here. But this is a nice little slipcase, actually, if you want to see it, have a little look at that. But... The Conjuring 2 is a really good horror movie story. It's not scary for me personally, but the story is where it's at here. Looking forward to the third one. I believe they're going to go down another real case that happened. So next up is one that was sent to my friend Alex Hampton from Film Reviewer Alex. I'll leave his link down below. And that is The Lighthouse. And you know what? A lot of people hate this film. A lot of people love it. I'm definitely down the middle of the road, but I... Do want to rewatch it because I know there's something there that I I did enjoy it. I just want to see it again because I've heard it does grow on you as well at times if you weren't sure the first time. Um, but there's a mermaid moment in this that freaked me the hell out. <laughs> William Dafoe, this is the best performance I've ever seen from him. He's a great actor. I've seen some brilliant performances, but this is the best I've seen him. Damn ye! <laughs> Uh, really, really good film. Really, really, really atmospheric. And that noise that was happening in the background every two minutes just added to the tension. And how alone these two were, it was just them two and this noise. So, yeah, it was kind of creepy at times, I'm not going to lie. Next up is because of another collab I done with Moviebug, James Lach. Most of you probably know him. I'll leave that collab down below as well, along with Bryn from Horror Hands. And that is What We Do In The Shadows. Now, this is another vampire film, but this is definitely more comedic. Taika Waititi directs and stars in this. It's hilarious. It's one of the funniest films that I've ever seen. Honestly, it really is. I've heard there's a TV show that I haven't seen yet. It's just about these four vampires living in this house. It's so damn funny, honestly. It really is. <laughs> like... It's like a mockumentary, basically. Taika Waititi gets up and says to the camera, this is always the scariest moment of the day for me. And it's like 6 o'clock at night and he opens it to see if there's any light shining in. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. It's good now. And he, like, he calms down. <laughs> it's, it's so good, honestly. I highly recommend this film. Next up is Queen and Slim, one of the first films I ever reviewed on this channel. Um... This is basically about a young black man played by Daniel Kaluuya who shoots a white cop and the whole of the US are basically on their tail. Him and Jodie Turner-Smith's character who have just gone on the first ever date and they have to run away from the war basically. And It's a really, really good film, really sort of like a Bonnie and Clyde sort of type vibe, you know, but you'd really get behind these characters. And you just feel really bad for them. You really do. But it's a good movie. I recommend it. Next up is East is East. One I have not seen for quite some time. I'm not going to lie. Uh, I remember thinking this was funny. The only part I can remember is where the young kid is getting an operation on his penis. <laughs> and the older sister draws this big massive penis and rips it in Rips it in half in front of him and he starts crying. <laughs> That's all I can really remember, but I do remember thinking, it, apart from that, it was funny, but I just don't fully grasp the story too much. I can't, you know, I need to rewatch it, but that to own it in the collection. Next up is Signs, another M. Night Shyamalan film, which I've just realised right now. And this is a decent sci-fi horror you know it's just about these crop circles appearing on this mel gibson's farm joaquin felix is in this as well this contains one of the scariest moments i've ever seen in a movie one of the biggest jump scares for sure you all know what i'm talking about if you've seen this and it is so effective but i like this film so i have to own it in the collection and last up we do have one that was sent to me by carly and you know, my friend carl and I'll leave his link down below, that is Ghoulies. And he said he didn't like this film, so he sent it to me. But Carl, I got a bit of, bit of a kick out of it. I can see why you didn't like it. There's some shoddy acting, some bad directing. But there's a bit of cheese in there. That's what I like. So I had fun with it. You know, I might pick up to Ghoulies too. So thank you so much for that, Carl. I didn't mind this movie whatsoever. 
And that is it guys, that is my Blu-ray and 4K update. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you want to comment about any of these films, leave them down below. And if you want to check out any of my other Blu-ray and 4K updates, they will be down below as well. Take it all easy guys, and I'll see you all in the next video.